believe it, Robbie? Well, it goes to the, the point. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. The heroes are there for all to see, but quite obviously the turning point in this game was Shinji Ono, the moment of magic from him. Brisbane were on top, knocking on the door, just really knocked the stop, stuffing out of them. They've been good in the second half, with respect to possession, the chances they've made. But Western Sydney, just too good. The story continues. The fairy tale continues. The Western Sydney Wanderers through to the grand final in their inaugural season. They've got the Premier's plate, and now they want to lift the championship trophy. Dino Cressinger scored the opening goal, a delightful back heel. And then Tony Popovich, his key signing in the lead up to this season, Shinji Ono. He's known as Tenzai, the genius from Japan. And he served up a delicious goal, fittingly in front of the red and black block. In a few minutes' time, they'll collect the Premier's plate, but the focus will quickly turn to Sunday week when they take on either the Central Coast Mariners or the Melbourne Victory in the big one. Full time here, Western Sydney 2, Brisbane Raw 0. Let's go down to Zappers. Thanks, uh, Brenton. Shinji Ono with me. Shinji, can you believe this? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's always uh, uh, all the time support us. And uh, yeah, we have we got really uh, good energy from supporters. Yeah. What about that goal? It's been described as one of the best goals we've seen in the history of the A-League. What were you thinking uh, when it came your way? Yeah, nothing. Just I want I want to uh, I want to win every game. Just, just do it. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Who score, you know? Just, yeah. What about the feeling in the squad now? Uh, you've been underdogs for the early part of the season and you continue to prove yourself. Did you believe that you could make the grand final? Uh, I mean, yeah. That mean every, everyone hard work every day, you know? Then everyone wants to be achieve more. And uh, we get already championship for regular season, but uh, everyone wants more. Yeah. We well, get a chance for more next week. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, Shane Sefanu about to join us uh, now. Uh, Shane, they're a good side, aren't they? Uh, were you beaten by the better side tonight? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think we gave a cheap goal away first half, and then Shinji's goal was world class. I said that to him. And um, look, they're a tough side to break down, and, and good luck to them next week. And you guys had a short turnaround. Do you think that might have hurt you uh, this week? No, nah, no excuses at all. No excuses at all. Um, look, you know, we wanted to come out and win tonight, and we thought we could, but unfortunately we've come up short. Thanks, uh, Shane. Always a pleasure. Yep. OK, thanks very much, Zappa. Plenty more reaction to come from Parramatta Stadium where the celebrations continue. They are almost there. They're into the grand final. Can they do it? We have so much to talk about. Andy Harper, as always, alongside me. We are asking a question to you at home on Twitter. The question is, can the Wanderers win the grand final without Yusuf Hersey? Hashtag Fox Football, yes or hashtag Fox Football No if you think they can't win it without undoubtedly Harps, one of the, the competition's best this season. A great player and he's their lucky charm. They haven't won without him this year. Um, Any time he's been absent, they've lost three, two or three draws from the five uh, since he hasn't played. Um, but, you know, he was the architect of the first goal because of his uh, just willingness to try and steal in. But, but foolishness in the end. And he is a firebrand. He's had discipline issues. Uh, this year uh, going out. In my opinion, that's a red card straight. Mm. Uh, he, um, he might have been facing the match review panel for a straight red on that one, but he got the yellow. Uh, he's, this culminates in the second, his second send off of the season. Um, and it's, a, it's hugely unfortunate for the fans who love watching him so much. He's uh, such a lucky charm for their team as well. And there's always harps. I, almost in any code when it comes to grand final time, there's always a story like this. There's always yeah. a player on the sideline, yeah. the captain or one of the best players, and this is the man, unfortunately, uh, deathly silence around uh, Paris Stadium when he walked off. Yeah, because everybody knew it was at stake and the contribution he's made. And you, you, the, the Hersey expulsion, Jacopo La Roca there as well, he's missing because of his errant elbow against Sydney FC. So, so that hurts. And Jerome Pollens left with a thigh strain. So um, you, you, if he doesn't 
doesn't recover the German Pollens, then their whole right side is dismantled for grand final day, the championship game, because Hersey will be missing. So, you know, it's a, it'll be a massive blow in the lead up. Don't, don't make any question about that. Tarek Elrich came on for Jerome Pollens. Let's hear from him now speaking with Zappers. Yeah, enjoying this moment, Tarek. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm obviously growing up in the west of Sydney. Uh, to have a home t uh, team in my, in my own backyard and being able to achieve what we uh, achieved in such a short time is, is amazing. And um, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We've still got that one more next week. And um, how special would it be if we get the victory? It'll be very special. What you've done this season so far has been very special. What about this crowd tonight? Mate, this is amazing. You know, these people have been crying for a team for so long. And, you know, they finally got one. Um, you know, they've got a working class team. And it showed tonight, you know, it went down to 10 men. Uh, it's never easy against a quality side like Brisbane. But credit to the boys, we all stuck together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been an amazing journey. You know, it uh, hasn't even been a full year yet. And uh, look what we've achieved. And hopefully this can only get bigger and big, uh, bigger for uh, the West of Sydney. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, mate. Harps, why, how on earth have Brisbane Raw, the defending champions, been unable to beat the Western Sydney Wanderers on all four occasions? Well, the first three, um, they weren't the Brisbane that made it into the finals and they weren't the Brisbane that was defending the title. Uh, and tonight they just weren't good enough. OK, let's go back to Wonderland for the Premier's Plate presentation. Semi-final that was. The Western Sydney Wanderers. Now, not only could they be Premiers, they could be champions. Fantastic game against the Brisbane Roar and following a final round against the Newcastle Jets up in Newcastle at Osgrid Stadium. Around 2012-2013, uh, the Premier's Plate is now going to your Western Sydney Wanderers. They did this with 57 points on the board and they achieved it by winning 18 of 27 matches and in that, a record-breaking 10 winning streak to present them with the Premier's Plate, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Football Federation Executive Officer, David Gallup. As he presents it to coach Tony Bobovich and your captain, Michael Beecham. Finally, Harps, the Western Sydney Wanderers, the coach and captain finally get their hands on the Premier's Plate. They won it two weeks ago in Newcastle. We witnessed those fantastic scenes yeah. uh, up the F3 from Parramatta. Anyway, a muted reaction this time from Tony Popovich. They certainly enjoyed it a fortnight ago, but the coach knows it's time to keep a lid on it. But, you know, rightfully, rightfully so, they get to enjoy this moment. Yeah, but the wrong time. They should exactly. have got that a couple of weeks ago. Exactly. Tonight's not about the minor Premiership now. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, the plaudits for the Wanderers have been sung. Now it's about winning the championship. And uh, anyway, there's a time and a place for everything. Unfortunately, I don't reckon this is the time or the place for the Premier's plate. But um. that, that's the sidebar <laughs> because uh, this has been an awesome performance tonight. You know, really, any questions about their readiness in a one off game to hit the level needed uh, were certainly dispelled. I thought they were awesome, really awesome. And, and Brisbane had periods of possession where you thought maybe the Wanderers had starting to concede a little bit, but in the end, Brisbane, even when they went to, in fact, when they had the extra man, they looked less likely. They collapsed structurally, uh, almost absolutely the raw going forward. And, and, you know, this is what teams like the Wanderers do. That's what Brisbane did in their two championship seasons. They just battered teams when they had possession, mm. that it made the other teams look like they had no idea when they got the ball. So too with the Wanderers, but in the other phase of play, they defend and harass with such intensity that when teams do get the ball, they, they got, no real inspiration to do anything. Every corridor they go down, they're, they're, they're intercepted or kicked or chased or harassed. And in the end, the guys in the red and black just wear them down. So much credit attributed to the coach, Tony Popovich. Let's hear from him now with Zappers. Thanks, Mel. He's uh, missing out on the lap of honour, so we won't keep him too long. Uh, tell us, uh, describe your feelings, Tony. Yeah, obviously, um, immensely proud of the players. You know, we... Um, we proved to be the best team in the league over 27 rounds and now we, uh, we give these fans an opportunity to uh, really enjoy a day out at a grand final and you know, it's really exciting. We've been speaking about the crowd tonight. How much of a lift is it for your team uh, to have this type of support? Yeah, obviously you can see the players, you know, they, they certainly lift uh, in these uh, occasions and, um, you know, there's, there's pressure with this kind of crowd as well. But the players have proved throughout the year they can handle that and uh, you know, it's a great day for them. You know, I'm really pleased for them and they'll certainly enjoy the week. 
uh, leading to a grand final because uh, they're rare and they're special. We saw you presented with the Premier's Play just a couple of minutes ago, uh, a couple of weeks late, but uh, nice to do it at home. But your celebrations weren't over the top. Are you trying to keep a lid on things now? No, I don't. You know, obviously we're happy and it's great to get the Premier's Play. And, um, but, you know, there's another job to do. And, you know, we don't want to just uh, make a grand final. We want to go in it to win it. One sour point of the night, I suppose, uh, Yusuf Hersey being sent off. Uh, what are your feelings about that? Yeah, disappointing. Disappointing to see him sent off. Um, you know, he's, he's an all-action type player and he gives his all. And uh, we're disappointed to see him get sent off and, you know, that he won't get the opportunity to uh, show his skills next week. We know that uh, you had a battle to bring this squad together. Shinji Ono was one of the key men uh, and he was immense again tonight. He showed his class, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You know, he's, uh, he's been out for a little while, but... Uh, you could see his quality today. You know, he's a, you know, he's a top player, and it's a, in a big game he produced. Enjoy it. Thank you. Tony Popovich there, certainly keeping a lid on things to a point, and he won't want celebrations harps to go on for too long. There is a massive week ahead, as Zappers confirmed a little late on in the match that the grand final will be Sunday next week at Allianz Stadium. What a week they're about to experience. Brilliant week, and I don't think anyone need be under any illusion that they won't be ready for grand final day. Whatever happens tonight, the awarding of the trophy uh, or the premier's played and the appropriateness of that timing is, is uh, you know, well, it, it's just such a sidebar and it won't distract them. They'll be ready to go. They've got a couple of significant issues in a football sense to overcome for grand final day. The absence of use of Hersey and the potential absence of Polens, because that's a massive double blow down their right hand side. But it's an awesome outfit. They have done an incredible job. Um, they, they, you have to be on your A game to beat them because you know, it's similar to playing the Mariners, you know they're going to turn up and whatever the circumstances, they're going to produce their A game. So the question for the, the challengers now, um, are you going to be able to produce your A game against the Wanderers? Because nothing less will be good enough to win. They won't have an off day. Uh, as sure as I'm sitting here, they won't have an off day. They mightn't have plenty of spit and polish on grand final day, but in general terms, they won't have an off day. Every player will turn up ready to fight for the title, and their opponents are going to have to see that off and better it. And that's the challenge. OK, time to hear from the captain of the Wanderers now, Michael Beecham with Zappers. Right in, right in front of the uh, red and black box, uh, Mal, they're, they're making plenty of noise, Michael. Uh, how good is it? Unbelievable, mate. You know, it's a great way to top off the season here at Parramatta. And, um, you know, one game to go now. We, we'll find out on Sunday, obviously, who we play. And uh, it's going to be a great lead-up to the match and really looking forward to now. But, yeah, it's, it's a bit surreal at the moment, you know. So it's been a fantastic ride and hopefully continues. What about for you personally? Because you had a tough time a couple of seasons ago. You went to Melbourne Heart. Things weren't going well for you there. You had a favour at one point. Did you ever think this could happen when you joined the Wanderers? My football's a funny thing sometimes, you know, and uh, I'll give credit to Papa, give me another opportunity, and uh, this season's been fantastic for me. I've been learning a lot, and like I said before, to lead the boys every week, it's just an honour, and um, I'm looking forward to walking out next week for sure. You'll be uh, sitting on the couch, no doubt, uh, watching it uh, on Sunday. What was that, sorry? Watch, watching oh, the game on Sunday, watching your, your potential opponents? Oh, I definitely will be watching it, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, looking forward to it, mate. It's, it's unbelievable. So, enjoy it. Thank you very much, mate. Hubs, who do you reckon they'd rather play? I know they'll say it doesn't matter, but who do you think? I think they'd rather play the victory um, because the Mariners, uh, even in the head-to-head, -head, have had the better of them, but they're so similar stylistically. Uh, it almost disarms the Wanderers. So they're looking at a reflection of themselves in the mirror. And I'm not quite sure if they have coped with it as well as they might. They won the last game, which got their nose in front for, in the race for the Premier's plate. But basically, the Mariners have, have, uh, have seen them off, I reckon, in the head-to-head -head in general terms. Um, so I, I'd suggest they'd probably prefer to play Melbourne Victory. But if Melbourne Victory turn up with their A game, it's a fantastic contrast to the, uh, the Wanderers, which would make for a great fo grand final in its own right. Indeed. Let's hear from Mark Bridge now with Zappers. Thanks, Mel. I wish you could uh, see what we just saw down here. We know the, uh, the chant. Who do you sing for? We sing for the Wanderers. The, the uh, players were getting involved as well. Mark, you missed it, but um, talk us through your, your emotions right now. Yeah, look, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, we've achieved so much in, in such a short period of time. There's still one game to go, but uh, it's great to, great to have the Premiers played and celebrate now of our fans. You've been there and done this before in finals and grand finals. How do you compare what's happened this year to what you've seen in your previous experiences at different clubs? 
Uh, look, you can't compare this to anything. I mean, uh, six months ago, oh, a year and ten days ago, actually, now, we didn't exist. Uh, we had six players, our first friendly game. And from there to now, it's uh, it's been an amazing ride. So, like I said, there's still one more game to go. We've got a long week now. Uh, I mean, the grand final's next Sunday, so the boys with little niggly injuries will be, will be right for that grand final. Does that make it more special, the fact that uh, you really had such a short period to bring this team together and for practice games you were bringing players from all over the place just to put an 11 on the park? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it takes time for a team to gel. Uh, so for us to gel as quick as we have and to play some of the football that we've played uh, is quite phenomenal. I mean, we had more trialists at our first training session than we had signed players. So uh, it, it's, it's excellent, but like I keep saying, it's not over yet. Thanks, mate. Uh, we'll let you enjoy the rest of uh, this celebration and then to get ready. Thanks very much. Six players a year ago. That is uh, some perspective. But, Harps, here are some of the highlights from the match. Two goals the Wanderers scored, and weren't they special? Well, this was straight out of their playbook. Har harassing opponents in their own half, winning possession and playing from there. Uh, this still could have been defended better by Brisbane, but brilliant finish from Dino Cressinger. He hasn't shown a lot of silkiness in the penalty area. It's certainly fair to say of Cressinger, but... He waited for a big game. He did, you can't <laughs> argue. And it, they've aimed up on the big night, you know. Critics of the finals format have been worried on behalf of teams like the Wanderers that they might get a bit of stage fright and their great mm -hmm. season comes undone. But they didn't show not one sign for a second that that was going to be the issue. What about this one, though? Well, you know, in the lead-up to the game, Mel, it was the two stars, outstanding stars for each team, both come into the game with the, under an injury cloud, Shinji Ono, Thomas Broich. Who was going to hold sway? And I think it's telling that not long after Thomas Broich left the field, after succumbing to his injury, Shinji Ono pops up mm. and scores that goal with just sheer brilliance. I mean, if, if you had to get a snapshot, certainly of how he's ignited the Wanderers, but also been the cornerstone of his career at that moment, when he took a glance up. Very few players in the world could have done that. In that mm. split second, make that decision, see the smallest opportunity available to him with perfect execution, and rightly so, just brought the house down at Parramatta. An amazingly exciting moment, capping off a great season to date with one very big piece of the puzzle left to go, and that's the championship day. Exactly. Anywhere in the world, that goal would have stood up as a all class, but uh, Zappers was just talking to Mark Bridge. He's got a fantastic record, Doesn't a he? history of scoring goals in the big games. Uh, maybe a bit of focus on him next week too. He knows when to step up. He's done it. Yeah, he's, he's been a big player all season. Um, goal a game in a grand final for him. He won it for the Jets in season three. He yep. scored Sydney's goal before the penalty shootout, Sydney FC against Melbourne Victory. Uh, now he goes into his third championship game and, and looking better than he's ever looked. He's always been... Um, promising Mark Bridge, but this year he's, he has be, become the sum of his parts, like a lot of his teammates in red and black. And again, the credit's got to go in that sense in large part to coach Tony Popovich and his sidekick Ante Milicic. They have done an incredible job with this football club. Uh, they got a little bit of luck along the way, but as Lee Trevino, I think it was, said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And they've earned every every thing that they've got so far and uh, you know they can't lose from here I think that's the beauty of the Wanderers you know whatever happens now they can't lose they have been the success story of the season. One thing we're not seeing vision of is uh, Brisbane Raw a word on their season a, a late charge yeah it, it seemed like Brisbane were back but uh, how do you sum up we know Mike Mulvey's there for the next couple of seasons now they've got that stability but uh, what kind of perspective can you take getting to this point from the sort of first half they experienced? Well I think really disappointing title defence you know they had enough quality to go three in a row. They showed signs of that in the last couple of weeks. Maybe they ran out a bit of petrol. Maybe they hit the wrong opponent on the wrong day um, because the Wanderers have just got that type of game which is going to suffocate a ball-playing team if the ball-playing team isn't on top of their game. And you, know, you talk about the, the lack of advantage for the top two teams again in this final series. Well, having the wounded players that, that Brisbane had to carry into this game because of their elimination match last week is an advantage for the home team tonight. Thomas Broich was wounded obviously um, and did very, very well to last as well as he did. Um, Jack Hingert didn't make it, which upset the team's balance. So that's a huge advantage to the waiting Wanderers. Who pounced? Mate, did they pounce? They were awesome. Brisbane disappointing uh, on balance. Their season had a few moments, smell where you thought, well, here we go and they started to build a bit of a case late but they ran out of steam tonight they weren't good enough and very disappointingly when they had the extra man I thought their structure going forward collapsed almost totally they did never even look likely 
Indeed, uh, they might take some confidence from that late run, but yes, nothing but disappointment and a, a hasty exit to the sheds and probably the bus at this point. <laughs> OK, so we leave the celebrations there for now at Parramatta Stadium. We are off to a quick break. When we return, we go back to Parramatta Stadium. We hear from Mike Mulvey. Zappers will give us an injury update, an all-important injury update. And also, Daniel Garb will talk to Mark Schwarzer about the EPL. Stay with us.